you can always tell by names, artwork, and screenshots when you're getting a new puppet combo horror game for the Nintendo Switch. They keep pumping them out and a lot of them are quite good. I've covered a lot on this channel from Nun Massacre to Stay Out of the House, and that is continuing as today a new game just released for the Switch. Let's dive into a tale of a retro VHS store and a crazed pig man. Here is my review of Rewind or Die for the Nintendo Switch. This story centers around Tony. Tony's been called for a late night shift at a video rental store because Michelle called in sick. Tony goes in and encounters strange rumors about disappearances all having accounts from their store until he is abducted himself, waking in the slaughterhouse of a crazed serial killer wearing a pig mask. Tony must then find a way to escape the pig man and rescue the other captives. Now as a story, I quite liked this game. You get a decent amount of time to explore and have people talk to you at the video to go rental store. And the killer is kind of charismatic in a really creepy, psychotic way with how he talks. No deep psychological background stuff, but the story does tie together nicely with all of the characters you encounter from the first chapter. When it comes to gameplay, this is a first-person survival horror game with puzzle and light combat elements. Similar to Bloodwash, you spend most of the game navigating 3D areas and solving puzzles by gathering items, and you get just a bit of combat towards the end when you have big encounters with the game's villain. As far as the Switch version or settings go, Rewind or Die is fairly limited. You only have a single filter to cycle through, normal or VHS, and some invert aim and control mapping settings. Nothing crazy like some of Puppet Combo's other games. Now with main progression, the game plays across five chapters. The first two chapters have you working at the video to go rental shop, talking to NPCs and doing your closing duties, while chapters three to five are you abducted in the killer slaughterhouse and solving puzzles to find a way out. I really like the flow of this game as you're given plenty of time at the beginning to really explore the rental shop and see all sorts of references they put into this game. Even just looking around the shop itself, we have a horror themed Flappy Bird arcade cabinet that you can play, and it was surprisingly deeper than I thought, where said arcade cabinet's levels are randomly generated every time you play, something I expected to just be a small scripted thing. And exploring the actual shelves of the store I found fascinating. I spent probably the first 20 to 30 minutes of the game just looking at all of the low res movie cases and the more I looked, the more things I recognized. At the start, it just looked like basic, not real boxes. Many of the movie titles were familiar, like Quarantine, The Tunnel, Powerpuff Girls Movie, and Stranger Things, but the posters didn't really match. Though going into the adult section, I started finding real world pornos with accurate poster art like Ejacula and Starbabe. And some of the horror sections actually had accurate posters, including the taking of Deborah Logan and Smile from just a couple years ago. There are references all over this game. Even in the slaughterhouse, you see the little notes that reference the Ninja Turtles. And when you eventually get the handgun, I laughed the moment I saw a bunch of boxes of Red Hawk pistol cartridges, 100% taken straight out of Resident Evil 4. Speaking of, the slaughterhouse is where the real puzzle solving happens. You do have to go and collect things in the video store, but they're more getting you used to the mechanics. Once you get into the slaughterhouse, you have to crawl through a hole in your cell and have to find items to open doors and get to new areas. Use a key to open a locked door, and then in that room you get a key item to another room. It's a very standard survival horror, but it works well. And I think part of that is the fact that this game feels like a stalker game, which Puppet Combo is known for, but it isn't really a stalker game for most of the adventure. There is a very creepy atmosphere around the game, and there are a ton of jump scares that will spook and scare you. But you're actually pretty safe most of the time. There are scripted chase sequences, like when you first get abducted and try to flee through a nearby alleyway, but it's only one part of the game in the sewers where the pig man is a consistent threat and wanders around just as you do. Though I will admit some music choices for the game were a bit out of left field for the horror atmosphere. When I heard a rock track that played whenever you were being chased, I wasn't sure if I needed to be scared or just run and jam to the music. And the secret boss of this game is, well, it's not what I expected at all. These sequences aren't bad, but it did feel like I was taken out of the horror atmosphere for a moment when they happened. Though all of this makes it a pretty nice exploration experience of exploring the rooms, collecting items, reading notes for lore and context, and solving puzzles. And even when the pig man is around and chasing you, if you know how to move around in this game, it's tense, but not that difficult. 
you can recover from a single hit from a sickle, regenerating your health. So as long as you don't get hit more than once, you can just keep running until he gives up and let you explore for a little bit as he wanders somewhere else. And even if you do get killed, the game constantly auto saves. So you won't have to redo much, if anything, whenever you get caught and he kills you. It's a bit of an odd mix. Hardcore horror fans might not like it with the game letting you breathe before you get another tense chase, but it's probably the most approachable game published by Papa Combo that I've played. It's got the heart attack inducing jump scares, but much more forgiving. And the more I've thought on it, the more I think this is probably the best entry point for those interested in puppet combo. It's got a lot of breathing room with exploration and jump scares, but also more danger than games like Bloodwash that barely had any actual danger posed towards the player. Now let's get the content in length. It took me the better part of three hours to get to the end of Rewind or Die. That included my little fascination with finding movie posters and video to go, along with me going out of the way to do the special little side quest at the end to save all the captives and fight the secret boss. If you don't do that, it might be more around two hours for your first run. Next up is presentation. We have the old PS1 style visuals, which look pretty good. A lot of the environments also fit the theme well. Once you get to the slaughterhouse, the creepy, bloody atmosphere looks great with the retro visuals. Now with performance, it bounces around, but is mostly good. Chapter one jumps around the 30 to 60 FPS range and is smooth. Though once chapter two starts, you'll find areas where you get frame drops when moving the camera around in multiple places. The oddity is that chapter two has frame drops when looking around the front counter of the video store, while chapter one did not have frame drops in the same location. Overall, the drops are noticeable but not severe, and they come in very small segments where a certain part of a room will have the drops, but the rest of that room will be fine. Now that's out of the way, let's talk battery life. Rewind or Die will give the original and light models a range of about four and a half to six hours, while the V2 and OLED models get seven to nine hours. In conclusion, Rewind or Die is another good horror game from Puppet Combo offering a creepy night shift that leads to an abduction and a lot of jump scares. Now on the downside, the game's performance has a fair amount of slowdown in parts of a lot of rooms in chapter two onward, and once you figure out its tricks, it might not seem as scary in parts outside of the jump scares. But if you're looking for a more accessible horror game as an entry point into what Puppet Combo does, it's a pretty good one. Reviews to go rates Rewind or Die for the Nintendo Switch a 7.5 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.